Hello and welcome everyone to another video. Given the unusual circumstances, I thought that today, instead of showing another name reaction, I wanted to shed some more light on a drug that currently attracts a lot of attention in both science, politics and also media due to its therapeutic potential against SARS-CoV-2. Now you all know SARS-CoV-2, or the coronavirus as most people call it, has led to a pandemic that affects many, many countries and tragically not only led to thousands of deaths in the meantime, but also to huge economic issues. So it is really important that therapeutic interventions are found and scientists all over the world work really hard to find a treatment for COVID-19. Now one of the most promising molecules in that respect is remdesivir. To start off with the structure, this compound is a phosphoramidate prodrug of an adenine C nucleoside. So what does it mean? Unlike a normal small molecule drug, a prodrug is a kind of a masked version of a drug that after administration is metabolized to the pharmacologically active drug. Now, in the case of remdesivir, the part of the molecule that is highlighted in red here is the prodrug portion and the blue structure is the active principle. Now a phosphoramidate, this portion here, is a common functional group in nucleotide chemistry and can also be found in other antiviral drugs such as sovospovir that is used to treat hepatitis C. And then why is this called a C nucleoside? Well, because a normal nucleoside would be linked to the ribose, which is this part here, via a nitrogen atom, like here in adenosine, whereas in remdesivir there is a carbon atom. But back to remdesivir, even though this compound is currently being tested against COVID-19, it was actually discovered when researchers at Gilead Sciences, which is a biotech company in California, were looking for a treatment against Ebola virus. As some of you may recall, Ebola is a frightening disease which broke out in West Africa between 2013 and 16 and resulted in more than 11,000 deaths. Like in COVID-19, the cause of Ebola is a single-stranded RNA virus. Now, in order to find a potential drug against Ebola virus, researchers at Gilead teamed up with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the United States Army Medical Research Institute for Infectious Diseases, and they screened a library of 1,000 diverse nucleosides and nucleoside phosphonate analogs. And interestingly, already from this screen, they identified GS5734, or remdesivir, now I mention this because in drug discovery it is really a rare case that you find the final drug already in the screen. Usually you get a starting point that requires a tedious optimization that can take up to many years. So I guess this was really a lucky shot. Now I would want to go into the detailed SAR studies that the Gilead colleagues did, but suffice it to say that this compound is actually quite potent against Ebola virus in different cell lines and here uh, what I mention is the EC50 in um, macrophages with um, a value of 86 nanomolar. Now, um, unlike most of the small molecule drugs that can be taken orally, remdesivir is actually administered as a once daily IV infusion. There are several reasons why this is the selected route of administration. First of all, oral delivery in patients that are infected with Ebola virus may not be ideal because gastrointestinal symptoms may limit the dose that is effectively absorbed. And also there is a high first pass hepatic extraction of phosphoramidates in the liver after oral administration. But back to uh, COVID-19, since remdesivir shows a broad spectrum of antiviral activities against several RNA viruses, including SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV, remdesivir is an ideal candidate to be tested against SARS-CoV-2. It is currently being evaluated in several clinical studies in adults diagnosed with COVID-19 and this whole process of taking an already existing drug and positioning it for a new disease is called drug repurposing. Before I'm going to show you how the drug actually works, let's quickly look at its synthesis route. What you see here is the second generation synthesis of remdesivir. And the synthesis starts from this ribolactone and this pyrolotriazine. Now treatment with phenyl magnesium chloride and TMS chloride actually affects the deprotonation and uh, intermediate protection of this amino group. And addition of turbogrinia here leads to 
metal halogen exchange and then this nucleophile here actually adds into the ketone and leads to the glycosylation product in 40 percent yield now treatment of the alcohol with a tms cyanide tms triflate and triflic acid at minus 78 degrees then led to the desired nitrile in this position and the cool thing is that this compound is really already uh, obtained in a greater 95 to 5 anomeric ratio so the desired beta anomer is actually the preferred one and this is also due to the um, triflic acid and this was found that this is really key to promote the high yield and also the high selectivity so 85 percent is really really good yield here now in the next step boron trichloride was used to deprotect the benzyl groups at these three positions um, and then the two and the three prime OH groups were protected as an acetonide in pretty good yield in, in order to install a prodrug residue on the five prime OH group this compound was treated with the paronitrophenolate 2 ethylbutyl alanine A which is shown here um, and this is then um, obtained when this compound is treated with uh, magnesium chloride, um, A, Hunix base, and an acetonitrile, and then afterwards with HCl, the acetonide is cleaved, and this actually then leads already to remdesivir. Interestingly, in the desired SP um, enantiomeric form of this compound. So remember, phosphorus is a chiral center here, and you can either get the RP or SP isomer. But the reagent itself, the A, is or ha already has the right stereochemistry, um, and this compound itself was prepared from um, two ethylbutyl alanine uh, via reaction with um, phenyl dichlorophosphate and nitrophenyl, followed by um, recrystallization of the desired SP stereoisomer from uh, diisopropyl ether. So finally, let's come to the probably most interesting question, how does remdesivir work? Well, after administration, the product is first cleaved into the active nucleoside. And the latter is then phosphorylated at the 5' OH group to give this nucleoside triphosphate metabolite. And this compound now mimics the naturally occurring ATP that is usually incorporated into the virus RNA and blocks the so-called RDRP. Now RDRP stands for RNA-dependent RNA polymerase and this enzyme replicates the genetic material of the virus and is therefore essential for its survival. Now let me show you how this looks like on a molecular level. Now I have switched my monitor to a program called Maestro and this allows to actually uh, look into crystal structures and actually see how different compounds bind to um, proteins and so on. And actually there is no crystal structure available for the Ebola polymerase. Remember this was actually the original um, target uh, for the Gilead uh, colleagues. But the scientists at Gilead modeled the active site with remdesivir based on published structures of HIV and HCV polymerase. Now what you can see here is actually remdesivir. That's this compound here. And if you would zoom out, you could see that this green part here is actually the nascent RNA strand. Now, what would be happening if this was a normal um, ATP, the chain would actually elongate and the virus could replicate its genetic information. But now remdesivir is different, right? It, it's not a normal nucleoside, but regardless, it will be actually incorporated into the nascent RNA um, strand, but it will actually lead to a termination. Um, so it will actually stop the replication um, and the virus will no longer be able to actually um, replicate its genetic information and therefore uh, will eventually um, die. So I think this is quite cool that we have the structural information. I just wanted to give you a quick you know, uh, look at, at how the compound actually um, is modeled into this um, 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 RNA-dependent RNA polymerase and I think it's it's actually quite cool how also the geometry looks with this nitrile group here and the C nucleoside. Yeah, and that's um, yeah pretty much the end of this video. I hope um, that remdesivir will actually be efficacious against SARS-CoV-2. I think that would really be very um, um, important and, and a big step forward 
to finding uh, a novel treatment and also uh, really important for the patients. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up or um, consider subscribing to this channel. Um, I hope to see you soon for another video and stay healthy and have a great week.